All right. So uh, the job is not a big job, but it does require paying constant att attention, not, you know, to things that happen or may th that you would like to prevent from happening, uh, monitoring what's coming in. The, uh, ideally, what one does is between the submission deadline and the release of papers every day, you look at the web page, see what's about to go out, make sure that it's all okay. Uh, it would be great if there were two people who wanted to do this, because then there would be a backup. Somebody could take a vacation, for example. Uh, <laughs> and my uh, sort of ideal person would be someone who's just gotten tenure. If you don't have tenure yet, uh, it's probably not a thing that you want to s worry about at this point in your career, but if you've just gotten <laughs> tenure, that would be perfect. So um, if you're interested, uh, see me or send me an email. If you aren't interested yourself, but you can think of a perfect candidate for me, that would be, <laughs> that would be great too. So uh, uh, I'd appreciate help, and uh, I am hoping to find other people to hand over some of this task too. Thanks. Okay, so one small announcement. Uh, if you have filled out a voucher um, for extra reimbursement, please return it to Robin today during one of the breaks. And it's my pleasure to introduce Jacob Lurie, who will talk about cohomology theories and community of rings. Thank you very much. Am I audible? So uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for having me here. And I'd first like to apologize to everyone in advance. I know this is an algebraic geometry conference, but the talks that I'm going to give are going to be fairly light on algebraic geometry. I'd like to eventually talk about some very rudimentary algebraic geometry, but in a somewhat exotic setting. But uh, this lecture, I'd just like to set the stage for that. And I'm going to start the story not in algebraic geometry, but instead in algebraic topology. So algebraic topology is the means of algebraic invariance. So one of the most important algebraic invariants, one of the most useful, is the cohomology of a space X with coefficients in an abelian group A. So uh, let me temporarily denote that just by HN of X, not mentioning the abelian group A. There are lots of different constructions of these cohomology groups. And for sufficiently nice spaces, they all give the same answer. So throughout this talk, when I say topological space, I'm going to mean sufficiently nice topological space, something like a CW complex. So uh, motivated by the fact that there were many different definitions, Eilenberg and Steenrod introduced axioms that characterized cohomology with coefficients in an abelian group. So let me uh, review what are more or less the Eilenberg-Steenrod axioms. So Cohomology is a contravariant functor. A continuous map from x to y gives you a map on cohomology going in the other direction. A consequence of this is that if you have a non-empty space, its cohomology always splits as a sum of the cohomology of a point and an auxiliary sum and, which you call the reduced cohomology of x. Cohomology is homotopy invariant. Homotopic maps between topological spaces induce the same map on cohomology. It's multiplicative. It carries disjoint unions of spaces to products at the level of cohomology. These cohomology groups in different degrees are related to one another by suspension isomorphisms. The reduced cohomology of x in degree n is the same as the reduced cohomology of the suspension of x in degree n plus 1. There's some version of excision, which is where you get long exact sequences. If uh, x is a complex containing a subcomplex y, then any class in the cohomology of x, which vanishes on y, comes from a cohomology class on x mod y. So that sequence there is exact. And the one that I really want to call attention to is the so-called dimension axiom. It's a normalization condition which tells you what the cohomology of a point looks like. The cohomology of a point is supposed to be concentrated in degree 0. And in degree 0, what you see is the abelian group A. So Eilenberg and Steenrod proved that these axioms characterize cohomology with coefficients in A. Any collection of invariants that satisfy these axioms must be cohomology with coefficients in an abelian group. And you get that abelian group by taking h0 of a point. Uh, subsequently, people realized that there were a lot of interesting examples 
of invariants that satisfied all of these axioms except for that dimension axiom. So we introduce a definition. These were originally sometimes called generalized cohomology theories or extraordinary cohomology theories. But I'll just call them cohomology theories. These are invariants that satisfy axioms A1 through A5, but maybe not the dimension axiom. The cohomology of a point could be concentrated in many degrees. And if I was being pedantic here, the data of the cohomology theory is not just these invariants, but also expressing how these invariants are related to one another by the suspension isomorphisms. So the motivating example for this uh, generalized notion of cohomology is complex K theory. So let me remind you, if you have a finite cell complex X, you can look at complex vector bundles on X up to isomorphism. The set of isomorphism classes forms a commutative monoid. You can add complex vector bundles via the direct sum. Now that's not an abelian group because you don't have inverses. But anytime you have a commutative monoid, you can make an abelian group just by formally adding additive inverses. And in this case, the abelian group that you get is called the complex K theory of X, denoted by K0 of X. So a uh, simple example, if X is a point, then a complex vector bundle on X is just a finite dimensional complex vector space. And the, uh, such things are classified up to isomorphism by their dimension. And the dimension is just some natural number. If you take the natural numbers and throw in additive inverses, what you get is the group of integers. So I've told you what k0 of x is when x is a finite cell complex. This definition can be extended to define kn of x for any integer n in any topological space x. And if you make that extension, what you get is a generalized cohomology theory. You get some invariants which satisfy axioms a1 through a5 which do not satisfy the dimension axiom. If you look at the k-theory of a point, what you get is instead z in every even degree and 0 in every odd degree. So rather than being concentrated in degree 0, this is periodic with period 2. And that periodicity is the subject of the famous Bott periodicity theorem. So going back to cohomology theories in general, what can you say about them? Well, the first thing that you can say about cohomology theories is that they're representable. The Brown representability theorem tells you any time you have a cohomology theory, each of these functors En is a representable functor in the homotopy category of spaces. That means that there's some space I'll call Z of N such that En of X is, can be identified with homotopy classes of maps from X into Z of N. So, if you have a cohomology theory, as I said earlier, it's not just separately these invariants En for all n. They should be related by suspension isomorphisms. And that tells you that these representing spaces, Zn, should be related to one another. What it tells you is that each Zn should be equivalent to the loop space on Zn plus 1. So this motivates a definition, one of the most important definitions in homotopy theory, the uh, notion of a spectrum. A spectrum is the data that we just saw on the other slide. It's a sequence of topological spaces indexed by the integers such that each one is identified with the loop space of the next one. So anytime you have a spectrum, it determines for you a cohomology theory. E, just take E n of x to be homotopy classes of maps from x into z of n. And the Brown representability theorem that was on the other slide tells you that this gives you essentially an equivalence between this notion of spectrum and the notion of cohomology theory. You get a bijection between isomorphism classes of cohomology theories and homotopy equivalence classes of spectrum. So to some degree of approximation, this word spectrum is just a synonym for cohomology theory. But it's a word that expresses that we're thinking about